This episode of See Tally Run is brought to you by FitSock, Grandma's Marathon, and MTech Results. <laughs> and Carrie Tellison, and today we're talking about minimalist shoes with Dr. Paul Langer. So let's get after it. So Dr. Langer, what is your advice on you know people trying to get into that minimalist like fad and how they can start doing it? Yeah, um, I do get the question not as often as I did a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I never tell someone that they shouldn't do it, um, but I do tell them that because the the load, the strain on the foot and ankle is much higher in a minimalist shoe than it is in a conventional shoe. It's smart to do it safely and cautiously, um, and there's probably some exercises they would want to start to do to help their body be ready to accept that different load. But I, I think it's safest and smartest to transition gradually by using something that kind of steps you down. So if you've been in like a big clunky motion control shoe for a while, I wouldn't jump mm -hmm. right to a minimalist shoe. You might want to, you know, next shoe go to stability, next shoe go to lightweight stability, maybe next shoe go to cushion and then down. Okay. Um, knowing that you're gonna get sore and achy and you have to do it very gradually. I think it's smart to do it on a natural surface like grass yeah. or dirt. Concrete is 50 times harder than the packed earth. Asphalt is 20 times harder. So if you're gonna run minimalist, I think it makes sense to go to a natural surface, at least to start. And then, um, the first time I did it, I would do like 10 minutes um, barefoot and then do my rest of my workout. Oh, you would do like 10 minute chunks. You wouldn't do like one minute on, one minute off. No. You so, would go 10 minutes. Yeah, I have like, where I run, I have kind of my go-to loop is a 10K around my house. Um, and I have some nice stretches with a lot of grass. So I would carry my Vibram five fingers with me mm -hmm. on my run, stop, switch shoes, do 10 minutes on a football field, put my shoes back on and then finish up. And then I started increasing that like in 10 minute increments. I wouldn't do it on consecutive days because you want to give yourself a day to adapt, right? Mm -hmm. Common mm -hmm. training principle. Um, and then I gradually lengthened it. And I got to the point where I was running five to 10 miles pretty comfortably in my Vibrams or barefoot. I didn't like barefoot as much because I would feel like I had to toughen my feet up each yeah. spring because obviously winter I'm not running barefoot or in minimalist shoes because I would just get cold. But to me, it, it hurt to run on concrete or asphalt if I did it too long, I could do it, but it just didn't feel as comfortable. Mm -hmm. It hurt to do anything fast, so mm -hmm. anyone that tells you they got fast running in minimalist shoes, I would be highly skeptical really? of that. Really? Okay. Yeah, because it hurts hard. Yeah. The impact forces are higher. And then if I was doing a long run or race, I would always use conventional shoes. So when someone asks, I just say, yeah, make a gradual transition, kind of listen to your body, um, do some things to make sure you're strong and your body can handle that new load, and then see if you like it and do as much as you want. How can we find you? Where are you at? Well, I'm with Twin Cities Orthopedics full time, but I also do some work with Marathon Sports uh, during the running season. So typically March through November, I'll go to the store one night a week. Currently we're doing Wednesday nights. Okay. Um, I do free evaluations, consults and things in the store. Um, and so if you have any questions, if it's about a shoe, if it's about an injury, whatever, I'm usually there uh, in the evenings on Wednesdays. Yeah, a lot of podi podiatrists go out to different running stores mm -hmm. and they you know, try to help the athletes get in the right pair of shoes, but if they have to go be up above and beyond, they can come find you at Twin Cities Orthopedics anytime. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Well, we'll find you. Well, hopefully we won't have to find that's you, right? That's right. It's good if you don't. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for joining me for my interview with Dr. Paul Langer. Get after it. If you like this video, subscribe to the See Tally Run YouTube channel by clicking here. Or check out my favorite episodes by clicking here. And don't forget, to get after it.